Hello. In this video, I'll explain the price elasticity of demand. It's one of the major concepts in economics that helps managers in their pricing decision. In general, price elasticity measures the responsiveness of the quantity demanded or supplied of a good to a change in its price. The price elasticity of demand is the ratio of the percentage change in quantity demanded to the percentage change in price. So it measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded to changes in price. We have to note that it's different than the slope. For example, we might have a straight line demand curve that it's having a constant slope. However, the elasticity will be changing along the demand curve. Also, you must be very careful about signs because it's generally understood that the demand elasticities are negative. However, they are often reported and discussed without the negative sign. And you know it's negative because of the law of demand that states that there is a negative relationship between price and quantity demand. Now we move to see the different types of elasticity. First, we're having the elastic demand. It's a demand relationship where the percentage change in quantity demanded it's greater than the percentage change in price. So as you can see here, we're having an increase in price by 23%. However, the quantity demanded decreased by 54.5%. So you can see that the percentage change in quantity demanded, it's greater than the percentage change in price. This is why we will have a price elasticity of demand greater than one in absolute value. And here we say we're having an elastic demand. The second type we're having, it's inelastic demand. It's a demand that responds somewhat, but not to a great deal, to changes in price. And usually it's between zero and one. So here you can see that the price increased by 40%. However, the quantity demanded decreased by only 10%. So if we divide 10 by 40, we will have a price elasticity of demand less than one. And we can say like this, that we're having an, ele an inelastic demand. The third type we're having, it's unitary elastic. It's a demand relationship where the percentage change in quantity demanded, it's equal to the percentage change in price in absolute value. So here you see that we're having a decrease in price by 50% we're having a same increase in quantity demanded by 50%. So in this case, we're having a unitary elastic and the price elasticity of demand is equal to one. Also, we're having two extremes. We're having the perfectly inelastic demand. It's a demand in which quantity demanded does not respond at all to any change in price and the price elasticity of demand is equal to zero. So as you can see here to the left, you're having the quantity of insulin demanded. The insulin, it's a medicine and it's needed by the patients. So at any price, they will have it. So if the price will increase, the same quantity will be demanded. The other the extreme we're having, it's the perfectly elastic demand. And here, the demand in which quantity drops to zero at the slightest increase in price. Perfectly elastic demand implies that individual producers can sell all what they want at the going market price, but cannot change a, to a higher price. So here, if they want to increase slightly the price, the quantity demanded will be zero. And this is where we say we're having a perfectly elastic demand. A good way to remember the difference between the two perfect elasticities, it's the perfectly elastic, it's horizontal, you can see it from the E, and the perfectly inelastic, it's vertical, and you can see it from the I. Now, in order to calculate elasticities, we're having three steps. The first, we have to calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded. So it's Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q1, the initial, times 100. Then the second 
it's the percentage change in price. It's P2 minus P1 divided by P1, which is the initial. And three, we gather them in one uh, equation. So it's the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. So here you can practice if we're having the price that it's increasing from 10 to 15 and the quantity it's decreasing from 40 to 25. If you want, you can take a pause or make a pause and calculate them in order to test your knowledge. Here we will continue. So the first step we do, it's the percentage change in Q, 25 minus 40 divided by 40, it's minus 37.5%. Then we're having the percentage change in price, 15 minus 10 divided by 10, which is the initial, it's 50%. To arrive to the third step where we calculate the price elasticity of demand. So here you can see we divided the percentage change in Q divided by the percentage change in P and we got minus 0.75. In order to say or to judge whether it's inelastic or elastic because it's less than one we can say that here it's inelastic. Now we will take the same example with the same numbers. However, if we start from a price from 15 to 10, okay, and the same change in quantity, do you think we will have the same result? Please try it, okay? And here I will show you that we won't have the same result because the initial or the denominator will change. So as you can see, the percentage change in Q, it's 60% now. And the percentage change in price, it's minus 33.3%. So here the elasticity, it's minus 1.8. So in order to avoid this, whenever we are going from one point to another, and in order for the elasticity not to change, to calculate elasticity, instead of using simple percentage changes in quantity and price, economists sometimes used average percentage change in both quantity and price. And this is called the midpoint method for elasticity. So here the change that you're having, it's the denominator, where you don't divide on the initial, however you divide by the average, which is Q1 plus Q2 over 2. The same done for the price, where you divide also by the average, P1 plus P2 divided by 2. Previously, we were dividing only by P1. So here also you can practice, and it's the same procedure, three steps. So what we can do, we calculate the percentage change in Q, and what's changing, it's the denominator, 40 plus 25 over 2. And in both cases, it will be the same. The second step, it's the percentage change in price. Also, it's divided by the average. And the third step, we will have to calculate the price elasticity of demand. And as you can see, in both cases, whether we are going from price 10 to 15 or from 15 to 10, we will have the same price elasticity of demand. Here, as we said previously, Despite we're having a constant slope, we will have a different elasticities. As you can see, the price elasticity decreases as we move downward along a demand curve. Demand is elastic on the upper part of the demand curve and is inelastic on the lower part. And in between, it will pass to be a unitary elastic demand. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.